Hello, welcome to True Crime Talk. Today I'm going to be talking about the murder of Pearl Bryan in the 1800s. I thought it was an interesting case. I found this article online from the Louisville Courier Journal from 2022, from May 4th, 2022, and it talks about the case of Pearl Bo excuse me, Pearl Bryan from the 1800s. I'm going to read it here. The daughter of a prosperous farmer, Pearl Bryan, was described as vivacious, pretty, fond of society, and very popular. At age 23 in 1895, she seemed to have made a promising match when she met Scott Jackson, a student at the Ohio College of Dental Surgery. But soon she was pregnant. Jackson sent a prescription for ergot and rye, a potion used at the time to induce miscarriages, to her home in Greencastle, Indiana, about 150 miles northwest of Louisville. Brian refused to fill it. With her pregnancy about to show, Jackson told her to meet him in Cincinnati, where he was in school. So I gather from reading this article that um, they were not married and she got pregnant. And she wanted to keep the baby, but her boyfriend was trying to get her to induce an abortion by giving her some chemicals. Ostensibly bound for Indianapolis to visit a relative, Brian instead took the train to the Queen City, where she registered at a hotel under the assumed name of Mabel Stanley. She met Jackson the next day at a tavern, where he slipped cocaine in her drink to try to end her pregnancy. It didn't work. So he's trying hard to make her abort, abort the baby, even without her knowledge. He's doing stuff to try to abort the baby. Jackson and his roommate Alonzo Walling decided to take more desperate measures. On January 31, 1896, they cut off her head so she wouldn't be identified and dumped the rest of her body on a farm in Fort Thomas. And here's a picture of Pearl Bryan. Through her custom-made shoes, police were able to trace Brian to her hometown and discover her name. Even without her head, Brian's mother said she was able to identify her daughter through a wart on her thimble finger. In a spectacular trial in Campbell Circuit Court, covered gavel to gavel by the New York Times and the Courier Journal, Jackson and Walling blamed each other for the gruesome crime, but were both convicted of murder and sentenced to die. Affirming their convictions, the, excuse me, the, the Kentucky Court of Appeals said their motive was obvious to end Brian's pregnancy before concealment was no longer possible. So they wanted to kill her before her pregnancy showed so nobody would know about it. Fourteen months after the murder, Jackson and Walling were executed in a joint hanging in Newport on March 20, 1897, with both men protesting their innocence on the gallows as 300 men watched and thousands more surrounded the jail. And here's an old newspaper article about their hanging Jackson and Walling die. Execution at Newport, Kentucky yesterday forenoon of the murderers of Pearl Bryan. Walling's plea of innocence, Jackson in the last hours tried to clear his associate, but the governor would not interfere. And it says it's a New York Times headline announcing the joint hanging of Pearl Bryan's killers. Bryan's head was never found and police theorized the perpetrators had disposed of it in the furnace at their dental school. The victim's demise was memorialized in folk songs. And right here is Pearl Bryan's headstone in Greencastle, Indiana Cemetery. It has been vandalized and is no longer legible. I didn't know it was vandalized. I just, to me, it just looks like wear and tear from, so you know, being so old. But I guess it was vandalized. And it says it's the Forest Hill Cemetery. Her headless body was buried in Forest Hill Cemetery in Greencastle, Indiana, where to this day, say Superintendent Jason Keeney, visitors leave pennies at her grave. They are always placed heads up to replace the one she lost. <laughs> wow. So that is the story of Pearl Ryan. 
She was age 23 when she was murdered. And it happened in 1896. And here is a website called Find a Grave, where it has Pearl Bryan's um, gravesite information. It says she was born October 25th, 1872, in Greencastle, Putnam County, Indiana. She died January 31st, 1896, age 23, at Fort Thomas, Campbell County, Kentucky. And she's buried at Forest Hill Cemetery in Putnam County, Indiana. And it says, on January 31st, 1896, Pearl traveled from Greencastle, Indiana to Cincinnati, Ohio to meet the man she hoped to marry. Instead, on February 1st, 1896, her body was discovered in a remote field. The discovery of her body led to one of the most sensational murder cases in northern Kentucky history. During the trial, locals sold souvenir products bearing Pearl's name. So I guess it was a famous or infamous trial like we had today for like maybe like um, O.J. Simpson or some other celebrities like that. Her fame being created from mystery and legend, she is famous for supposedly being one of the many souls that haunts Bobby Mackey's music world in Wilder, Kentucky, located near the site where Pearl's body was discovered. So this was a very famous trial at the time. I guess like um, like the, uh, oh, I can't think of the lady's name now, the lady who was just convicted of killing her kids in Idaho and her boyfriend or her husband who's going to go on trial soon for that. So I guess at the time this was um, a big deal all across the United States. Let's look at her pictures. Okay, so here is her picture. And this is her gravesite. This is her headstone, and this is her family headstone. It's another picture of her. Here's a newspaper article. I'll try to read it like one of the original newspaper articles. Pearl Bryan murder. The story of Miss Hollingsworth exploded. I believe that says exploded by investigation. Cincinnati, February 13th. The latest developments in the Pearl Bryan mystery was the establishment of the fact that the murdered girl had placed herself in Jackson's hands Monday, January 27th and was here Monday and Tuesday night. This explodes Miss Hollingworth's story that Pearl was went oh excuse me was in Indianapolis on these dates. Two careful postmortems disproved the story of abortion, actually or attempted, as well as death by poisoning. Not a trace of the head has been found. Believes the woman lied. So apparently some woman named Miss Hollingsworth uh, gave a story to the investigators or something. I am having a hard time reading this. Let me see if I can, okay. Believes a woman lied, Indianapolis, February 13th. After doing more or less talk in Lulu May Hollingsworth, who has made herself notorious by her alleged knowledge of the Pearl Bryan murder, was released from police headquarters Tuesday. Police Superintendent Colbert says he is or Colbert says he is satisfied the girl has been lying all the way through and as the Cincinnati police say they do not want her, the Indianapolis police have no further use for her. So apparently it's just, you know how when uh, some people come out of the woodwork to get publicity. So I guess even in the 1800s that was the thing. <laughs> okay. Let's see what this bottom one says. If I can read it, reward for Pearl Bryan's head. Green Castle, Indiana, February 13th. The county commissioners took some action Tuesday in the Bryan case. It is 
proposed to offer a reward of $500 for the recovery of the head of the murdered girl in the hope of stimulating the search for it. The body, will, the body still awaits burial and will not be taken from the vault until the case is finally disposed of. So they looked for her head pretty hard, but they never found it. William Parsons, a boatman, while digging for coal in Modak Sandbar on the Kentucky side of the Ohio River, found a skull with the lower jaw gone. The upper jaw had nine teeth. The front teeth were filled with gold. An expert dentist says it's the skull of a woman, 18 to 23, and it is believed to be that of Pearl Bryan of Greencastle, Indiana. Her headless body was found on February 1, 1897, Fort Thomas, Kentucky. Frankfort, Kentucky, special to Crawford County paper. In the case of Scott Jackson and Alonzo Walling, sentenced to be hanged for the murder of Pearl Bryan, the Kentucky Court of Appeals today overruled the petition for a rehearing. The records were immediately transferred to Governor Bradley, who has 30 days to consider the case and fix a date for the execution. On February 25, 1897, Sheriff Plummer of Campbell County, Kentucky, received the death warrants in the case of Scott Jackson and Alonzo Walling, directing him to carry the warrant into execution between sunrise and sunset of the 20th day of March. This gives the sheriff power to make two executions or of hanging them both at once. He announced the latter. The execution was carried out in the Newport, Newport Courtyard on May 20th, 1897. So this, these couple of paragraphs are talking about the execution of the ones who were convicted of a murder. And up here it talks about a man named William Parsons finding a skull. But this, the actual, I guess they determined that the skull was indeed not hers because her skull has never been found to this day. Unless somebody did find it and they determined it wasn't hers. But I guess the dentist, the dental records, even back then, the dentist would know if it was her skull or not. Let's see what this says. Oh, this is from February 10th, Greencastle, Indiana. Talks about finding her body. The headless body of Pearl Bryan, who was brutally murdered at Cincinnati, was brought to Greencastle Saturday night and at once deposited in a vault. When the news of its arrival spread over the city on Sunday, hundreds of people went to the cemetery and for several hours there was a large crowd around the doors of the vault. So they put her body in a vault and the townspeople <laughs> came to the cemetery to look at it. And this, she wasn't buried yet, they just put it in a vault to protect the body while the investigation was underway. So gazing at the casket through the iron gratings of the door. In the forenoon, Mr. and Mrs. Bryan, father and mother of the murdered girl, and her sisters and brothers visited the cemetery and entered the vault. Mrs. Bryan was so overcome by the sad spectacle of the headless trunk of her daughter that she swooned in the vault, and the father was nearly overcome in a similar manner. While the relatives were in the vault, there was a meeting of the young and middle-aged men of the city some distance away, and it was said later that some 25 or 30 of these pledged themselves to each other to avenge the girl's death if the murderers were not hanged by the law. The organization thus formed is said to be regarded simply as the nucleus of a larger one which will take the law into its own hands if Jackson and Walling escape the extreme penalty of the Kentucky courts. See, and I guess this is like a poem that was written about her. A lot of folk songs and poems was written about this case, about Pearl Bryan, so this might be a poem or folk song. So let's see. A girl so radiant in the dawning light gathered the gems of shining dew that fell on grass and spray and made itself a shell. She was as fair as iris and as white as snowy sea foam on a starlit night. And she was happy and she dreamt to dwell among the loving whom she loved so well. O stroke of death, it breaks but cannot blight. For there is yet, O hear it, hear it, earth, and thou too, heaven, hear it, some sweet place where all is even to eternity, and there is yet a triumph, like a birth out of the black of death, that shall efface all grief and darkness, broken pearl for thee. 
This looks like it's from like a library book thing. It's a, like a sketch of Pearl Bryan. A tearful letter from mother of Pearl Bryan, woman whose daughter was murdered in 1896, writes note of condolence to parents of Miss Schrader. Prober still hope, but see little light. Investigative investigators at Bedford are without a definite clue in murder case. So this is too small for me to read. So I can't read it with my bad eyesight. <laughs> but apparently um, after Pearl Bryan was murdered, another murder happened somewhere else and her mother wrote a letter to the parents of that child to express her condolences to um, their daughter who was apparently murdered also in a different case. I would like to read that, but I can. It's just too small. Let me see if I can. See, even if I make it bigger, it just gets blurrier. So I'm not going to be able to read that. But it's on Find a Grave if anybody has better eyesight and wants to look that up. Let's see. Find Pearl Bryan's Head, February 18th, Cincinnati. C.H. Glendorf, a contractor who has the contract to fill the ground between Newport and Dayton, Kentucky, between Newport and Dayton, Kentucky, across the river from Cincinnati, yesterday discovered a skull that is believed to be that of Miss Pearl Bryan, a Greencastle, Indiana girl who was murdered and her body decapitated on February 1st, 1896 by Jackson and Walling, Cincinnati medical students. They were actually dental students, to my understanding, who were afterward hanged. Her headless body was identified by her mother, but the head was never found. The measurements of the skull tally with the measurements of those of Miss Bryan's skull. So I guess every skull they found during this time around her death and for years after, they assumed it was hers. But to my knowledge, her head has, her actual skull has never been found. So apparently they just find skulls randomly <laughs> a lot. <laughs> okay. And there's Pearl Bryan again. Identify the Fort Thomas victim, Pearl Bryan, daughter of an Indiana farmer living near Greencastle, the murder gr murdered girl. Her mother recognizes the clothing and shoes. Scott Jackson, a young dental student, arrested in this city, charged with being her slayer. So this is the Find a Grave website. It has this information and it has her siblings. She came from a big family. She had, I think it was 12 siblings altogether. So this website has um, some of her siblings listed. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is eight of them, but I think she came from a family of 12 children. This is our parents, Alexander Stanford Bryan and Susan Jane Farrow Bryan. So her dad lived till 1901 and her mother lived to 1913. Oh, and then they got a thing for infant babe, Brian. So I guess this is for the baby that she was carrying. Yeah, because there's the father, Scott E. Jackson, which was the man, one of the men hanged her boyfriend who was hanged for her murder. So, wow. Taken from mother and family too soon, babe, Brian. January 31st, 1896. This child was murdered by father at five months gestation along with mother. So this was the case of Pearl Bryan. And to this day, as far as I know, her head has never been found or been confirmed to be have been found. But if you've ever heard of Bobby Mackey's Music World in Wilder, Kentucky, it's said to be haunted for several different reasons. Um, I think BuzzFeed Unsolved did a video about this place. I'm pretty sure they did. It uh, seems like I remember watching it with, I can't think of their names, but if you're into true crime or BuzzFeed Unsolved, you know who I'm talking about, the, the boys. <laughs> I can't think of their names right now, but um, 
on BuzzFeed Unsolved. And I will link that video if I can find it down below this video so y'all can watch that about Bobby Mackey's if you're interested in that. It's like they're like going on a ghost hunt there or something like that. But, so that is the case of Pearl Bryan. May she rest in peace. And people who go to her grave, they put pennies on her grave and put them heads up for her head that has never been found.